Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a major winter storm which might be your first big winter storm since the winter of 2017-2018 for portions of the coastal northeast. We're going to be going over the GFS, the Canadian and the European model and analyzing what all of these models are showing. And also if you would like a personal forecast, leave a comment with your state or city name and I'll be responding back to you within about an hour or two of you posting that comment and usually I am quite quick with my responses there. And also we could be dealing with a bit of ice on that southern side of the system over portions of the interior mid-Atlantic. Definitely watch out if you live in North Carolina, Virginia, Kentucky, or Tennessee. Uh, and definitely some areas could get closer to 20 inches of snowfall if some of these current model projection projections are uh, correct. Now, here's the current National Weather Service page. We'll go from west to east. We see some winter weather advisories and some winter storm warnings scattered through the western United States, as well as for northern Alaska. There you have some winter weather advisories. Winter weather advisories advisories and winter storm warnings also for portions of the south central United States with some wind advisories in uh, Texas and New Mexico and some red flag warnings further to the south of there. We also see some more winter weather advisories uh, for portions of uh, northern Maine and we see some, uh, some uh, I believe those are dense fog advisories for portions of southeastern New England and portions of the southeast. Now, here is what the current uh, GOES satellite image looks like off the west coast and we are looking at that tight wrapped up low pressure system which is actually going to become our uh, big winter storm for portions of the east coast. It's originating over the western United States it's going to crash into the western United States and then eventually it'll head further east and turn into again that blockbuster winter storm. So it's south of Alaska here, it's uh, to the west of the west coast uh, and that's kind of your general location of this and what happens out in the Pacific is going to have a big impact on what ends up happening over the east coast now Here's what the GFS model is showing, uh, and for those of you who are wondering, the 18Z GFS, which was last night's, uh, last night's run, was showing a much uh, rainier solution than what the rest of the models were showing, and that has definitely changed overnight, and now the, most of the models are to actually a much snowier solution than what they were showing before. So uh, definitely, if anything, the models have actually become colder, snowier, and a lot more intense with their uh, precipitation. Now, here would be what the GFS is showing by Tuesday. Day, right around uh, 12 p.m. Central Time, we see that low pressure off the co uh, off the coast of uh, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. But we have that bigger system uh, in the Central Plains. So uh, this would be six uh, six. Um, actually, this would be 12 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Uh, this would be 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And we see a little area of, again, disorganized showers off the coast of the southeast. This is going to be your nor'easter. We have one component of the storm that's going to be mainly over land, but that's going to merge up with another system that's going to be off the shore of the, of the southeast. Now, where does this uh, system form? That's going to be a big thing. Once this system actually forms, once we get to Tuesday, we'll have a very, very good idea of what will actually happen. If the system forms further off the shore, if it forms uh, about 100, 200 miles offshore, That'll definitely make an impact because then it's going to have more of an offshore track, which would indicate a much more snowier solution, maybe a less intense precipitation, but definitely a more snowier solution. If it's forming over portions of southeastern Georgia and off the coast of there, uh, just off the coast of there, then it's going to have a, a storm track that kind of rides up the coast and provides more of that snow as you get further inland. Areas along the coast might not get as much snowfall, so that's going to be a big factor into this. And it's actually something that I haven't seen a lot of people talking about. Usually, people People are just looking at, oh, the GFS is putting snow here, the European is putting snow here. You have to look at why that's happening in order to actually understand uh, what's actually going to happen uh, and what factors could change that could change your forecast. And now, as we continue this forward on the GFS, this would be by Wednesday right around 1 in the morning Eastern Time. And then as, as we get to uh, 7 in the morning, uh, we're seeing some of that snowfall entering the mid-Atlantic uh, into portions of the uh, interior northeast and the Ohio Valley by this point. Here would be by Wednesday right around 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We're looking at that snow uh, for portions of the coastal northeast and the interior mid-Atlantic by this point. And we're looking at some of that rain as you get further uh, to uh, and closer to the coast. We're looking at some mixed precipitation and potentially some ice occurring over portions of Virginia and North Carolina. So definitely, if you live within that area, uh, take precaution, and I'll probably have my ice accumulation forecast out uh, probably by Monday or by Tuesday. Now, here would be by Wednesday evening, right around 7 p.m., and we're looking at 
a low pressure off the coast of North Carolina by this point, and this would be a quite prime, a prime position for uh, some decent snowfall along the coastal northeast and the coastal mid-Atlantic. If this was a little bit further to the west, we would have a much snowier uh, storm. If this was a little bit further to the, or actually if this was a little bit further, further to the east, we would have a much snowier solution. If this was a little bit further to the west, we would have a much rainier solution. So thin margins are going to be really the big picture of the storm. Now here to be by Thursday right around 1 in the morning heavy snow along the I-95 corridor and then as we get to right around 7 in the morning uh, it's moving off the shore of about New Jersey and south of Long Island by that point and we're looking at most of those uh, flurries and uh, main snow bands are moving into southeastern New England. Now that system's pretty much all said and done with as we get to I would say probably right around 10 or 11 in the morning on Thursday. Now here to be what the, uh, the actually the Canadian model is showing with this event we see that system uh, forming off the shore of the southeast we see that other system in the central plains and these two are going to converge what the Canadian model actually does is it brings it closer to the coast but if you have this closer to the coast then what you're going to need is a stronger high pressure which would in, uh, indicate more cold air and that's what the Canadian model does it brings in a stronger uh, a jet stream flow and it brings in a stronger high pressure which would indicate uh, it would kind of can cancel out that low pressure being closer to the coast so you can either have a stronger high pressure or a uh, offshore track of the storm. You can either have one of those and that would lead to a snowier solution if that makes sense. Now here to be by Wednesday right around 1 in the morning. We see that low pressure off the shore of Georgia and South Carolina. That other system down in Texas and Arkansas in that area. And then here would be by Wednesday right around 7 in the morning. Now we see that area of snow over portions of Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana, but we also see that area of heavy mixed precipitation and ice over portions of North Carolina, Virginia, and Tennessee. Now, we still see that system uh, and that low pressure formed over portions of uh, uh, Tennessee and into Kentucky, but what you really don't see on the screen, but it's just to the bottom of your screen here, you see a semi-closed isobar, which would indicate another low pressure uh, over eastern North Carolina, and this slow pressure is going to transfer its energy to the stronger storm, which is offshore, and that's going to end up becoming a stronger storm and move up the coast. So that's kind of the dynamics of this storm. You see that low pressure transfers. We see over eastern North Carolina a 1,007 millibar low pressure system. We see heavy, heavy snowfall uh, over portions of Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, uh, and then some of that moderate snowfall is heading a little bit further to the north. Here would be by right around 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Wednesday. We're looking Looking at heavy rain over portions of uh, of Delaware, Maryland, and southern New Jersey, but that snow, that heavy snow, is just to the north of there. As you get right around uh, Maryland, northern Delaware, uh, New Jersey, southeastern Pennsylvania, that's where your heavy snowfall is by this point. Now, I'll caution you: the Canadian model does like to overestimate storms, uh, so I wouldn't take. And it's also a little bit colder th than what actually usually happens, so definitely take this with a grain of salt. But it's definitely interesting that we see. All the models agreeing on something uh, for once this winter. Usually, uh, it, you have to go within three days for them to really get into this good of agreement. Uh, and we are, we do have quite good confidence that this storm will occur. Now. Here would be by right around 1 in the morning on Thursday, and then here would be by 7 in the morning, and it's heading uh, south and southeast of uh, southern New England, and we'll look at some of that heavier snow uh, as you get into southeastern New England as well. And then it's pretty much all said and done with, again, maybe some flurries over eastern New England, but for the most part, it's all done with as we get to Thursday right around 1 p.m. Now, here's what the European model shows. We'll take a zoomed in look in a little bit, but let's take a zoomed out look for a little bit as well, just so that we can get a good idea of what's happening. We see that system off the coast of the southeast. We see that system over the central United States. And again, this one's going to head over uh, through the mid-Atlantic. This one's going to move up the coast and they're going to kind of merge somewhere over this region uh, and exactly where it's going to play a big role. Now, here to be by Wednesday around 1 a.m. and then here to be by 7 a.m. Let's take a zoomed in look at the Ohio Valley and we're looking at some snow, uh, light to moderate snow, nothing major over portions of uh, the Ohio Valley. And 
and then some icing over portions of North Carolina and Virginia. Now that icing only gets even more intense and we start to see your first flakes uh, start to pop up over portions of the interior mid-Atlantic and uh, through portions of the northeast as well and then you see that thin rain snow lines start to occur over portions of uh, and that rain snow line is probably going to be a big indicator of how much snowfall you see if you're to the north of there you're going to see mainly snow if you're to the south of there you're going to see mainly uh, rain and it's going to be a very thin probably 10 mile wide uh, rain snow line that's going to play a big role in who sees more snow who sees less snow you might go from a 15 mile drive to the south and you might see uh, maybe a dusting of snow you might go 15 miles to the north of your area and you might see a foot of snow so this is going to be a big storm and it's going to be a big uh, gradient of how much snowfall you're actually going to see now Here's by Thursday morning, and the European is actually a little bit delayed on this. It brings uh, most of the heavy snow, and it lingers that into Thursday morning, which is a bit interesting. It's a bit different, but still uh, showing generally the same area of snow. Uh, then on the back side, more of that cold air comes in by Thursday morning, and it transitions a lot of those areas, which if I go back, were in rain. A lot of those areas further closer to the coast are going to turn over to snow, according to this model, as we get to right around 7 a.m. Thursday. Here would be by 1 p.m., and then here would be... Uh, by 7 p.m. Uh, and we're looking at uh, on Thursday we're looking at mainly some rain and snow showers I think m mainly in the form of snow uh, over portions of New England that are going to eventually uh, kind of die down and you won't see too much out of that now here's what the maximum wind gusts are for the storm because this is definitely going to be a big role and we could be dealing with potentially blizzard conditions if this were to be correct because uh, if we're looking at this this is a not so usually you want to add about 5 to 10 miles uh, 5 to 10 to this to get into miles per hour generally that's an easy way to calculate it and we're looking at uh, potentially along the coast closer to 50 mile per hour gusts now we did notice that on the european most of that colder came in on the back side thursday morning and brought in closer to the coast some of that heavy snowfall so along the coast you might be dealing with blizzard like conditions uh and maybe exceeding blizzard conditions by quite a bit blizzard conditions only require frequent gusts to 35 miles per hour if you're doubling that then it would be uh, uh, quite dangerous conditions and potentially might see a couple blizzard warnings go up over coastal Delaware, New Jersey, and Long Island there if this were to be correct. Now here's what the European model is showing for snowfall and uh in the grays, we're looking at under an inch to two inches, two to six inches in the blues, six to ten inches in the purples, ten to twenty inches in the more vibrant pink, and then in that lighter pink, that's twenty to thirty inches. In those lighter blues, that's thirty to forty inches of snowfall. And according to this, there's a maximum on the screen of forty five point three inches. Now, I don't think that's likely. Uh, I think you probably want to cut these amounts, uh, probably multiply this by about two thirds, and I think it'll be two thirds of what you're seeing on this map, maybe half of what you're seeing on this map right now, but definitely it will be a major storm, and I think this is a better tool to outline where the heaviest snow might be uh, from this event and where the lighter snow might be. It's not really a good tool for how much snowfall you'll actually see, so don't definitely don't look at these maps to see, oh, I'm going to see 8 inches of snowfall. Uh, look at these maps to see whether you're in that big area of heavier snowfall or whether you're in that big area of lighter snowfall. That's going to be mainly what I use this tool for, I really don't use it for uh, this far out, th three or four days out. I don't use this for exact snow totals because they can definitely be quite inaccurate. Now, here's what the GFS model is showing. And again, this is definitely one of the perks for these types of tools. You can see that over southeastern New England, you didn't see too much. But then you get further to the south into the mid-Atlantic. And you guys are looking at quite a bit of snowfall if this were to be correct. And then here's what the, uh, uh, actually that would be the GFS. Here's what the Canadian model is showing. And and uh, you can see those that band of heavy snowfall is actually much wider than what the other models were showing. Uh, so that's definitely something that we want to take in mind. And def definitely that could be a scenario. Uh, but you're looking at that main area of heavy snow closer to the coast if the Canadian model were to be correct. Now... Also, I just want to mention that behind the storm, you're going to be dealing with frigid temperatures. Here are going to be, in Fahrenheit, your temperatures uh, on Friday, your low temperatures. And we're looking at uh, low temperatures in the teens, single digits. And then as you get into kind of those those green colors, I don't know really what color that would be, but that green color, that's where you're below zero. So this might be some of the coldest air of the season. And with that snowpack already on the ground over some areas, if the coastal northeast does end up getting quite a bit of snowfall, that'll reflect some of your sunlight. It'll make it much harder to 
for that to melt. Now, here to be by Saturday, and we're looking at some of that m much colder temperatures, and th those colder temperatures kind of shift uh, shift further to the uh, south, and we're seeing uh, single digits, uh, maybe even below zero as you get further uh, to the north. Now, Here's by uh, Sunday, December 20th, and this is really moderating by this point. Your low temperatures are warming up uh, into the teens and 20s, but still fairly cold. And then here's by uh, Monday, and we're looking at low temperatures uh, still below, below 32 degrees, but mainly uh, they're going to be uh, a little bit warmer, probably in the upper 20s for a lot of areas. Now, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Again, if you would like a personal forecast, leave a city or state name down in the comments, and I like to respond within about an hour or two of you posting that and usually it's a lot quicker than that but uh definitely at the maximum it'll be about two or three hours uh i'll see you guys in the next video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications by the way uh it really helps out the channel uh so again i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye